In this video, I'm going to talk about topological manifolds. So what is a topological manifold? Well, roughly speaking, a topological manifold is a topological space that locally looks like Rn for some n. So for example, if you imagine a sphere, let's take the two sphere, that is the set of points a unit distance from the origin in R3. If you imagine a small ant living on this sphere, to the ant, it locally looks like there are two perpendicular directions to travel in. So it looks like for this ant that this is a plane. And this is true, moreover, for any um, smooth surface. So if we take a torus, for example, if you imagine a, a spider on the torus, to this spider, again, it looks like it's a plane. There appear to be two perpendicular directions to travel in. And um, if we zoom in close enough, it looks like it's part of a plane. And this is true for any smooth surface. So we now want to generalize this. So to give the formal definition, a topological space M is called a topological manifold of dimension N, so a topological N manifold, if the following conditions hold. So firstly, we require that M is second countable. And uh, this means there's a, a countable basis um, for the topology of M. And recall that a, a basis for the topology of a topological space is uh, a family of open subsets of that space such that every open set um, in the topology is a union of uh, some subfamily of, of that basis B. So um, requiring there's a countable basis, that's what it means for the space to be second countable. We also require M is Hausdorff. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, if we have our topological space M, if we have two points, call them P and Q, if there are distinct open neighbourhoods, U and V, of P and Q, that it is joint, if this is true for every pair of distinct points in the space, then it's called a Hausdorff space. So we can say for every P and Q and M, that are disjoint, there are open neighbourhoods U and V, such that P is in U, Q is in V, and the intersection is empty, they're disjoint. Uh, we also require M is non-empty, uh, and we require that M is locally Euclidean of dimension N. So this is the condition that encodes that the, the space locally looks like Rn. So more formally, we can say for every point x in M, uh, there is an open neighbourhood U containing x, such that U is homeomorphic to an open subset in Rn. OK, and uh, you can check a nice exercise is to check that, that we can replace V with either Rn itself or an open ball in Rn. And then the definition is still be equivalent. So that's a nice exercise to check that we've got a few equivalent definitions of what it means to be a topological manifold. Um, a small piece of notation, we sometimes write MN to mean a topological N-manifold. Okay. Um, so what are some examples of manifolds then? Well, uh, perhaps one of the best examples is RN itself. Um, RN is a, a topological N-manifold. So why is that? Well, firstly... Um, it's second countable. It's second countable because if we take the basis 
given by open balls with rational centers and rational radii, then you can check, another nice exercise is to check that this, um, firstly, that this is a basis for the topology of Rn, and secondly, that this is countable. Um, and uh, why is Rn Hausdorff? Well, Rn is a metric space, and uh, metric spaces are always Hausdorff. And uh, certainly Rn is non-empty. Rn is locally Euclidean. This is easy to see because for every point in Rn, Rn itself is an open neighborhood of that point, homeomorphic to itself. So certainly Rn is locally Euclidean of dimension n. So Rn is an n-manifold. Other nice examples are uh, spheres, the n-sphere, Sn, um, the n torus, which is the product of S1 with itself, n times, um, Rpn, Cpn, which will be defined in, in later videos. Um, so those are just a few simple examples. And uh, what would be something that isn't an example, so a non-example, if we take in the plane, so here's R2, if we take the union of the two coordinate axes, so this is the union of the set of points in R2 with x0 and the set of points in R2 where y is 0, um, the union of these two lines is not a manifold, and things go wrong at the origin. So why do things go wrong at the origin? Well, if we take any other point that isn't the origin, so for example, a point like this green point here, this green point has an open neighborhood um, that is homeomorphic to R. And But the, the problem is with this blue point, this has an open neighborhood here in yellow that is not homeomorphic to R. And why is this yellow neighborhood not homeomorphic to R? Well, if we remove the blue point from this yellow neighborhood, it, it, it separates it into four connected components. But uh, for any interval that's, or, or for, for, well, for any set that's, that's homeomorphic to R, if you remove a point, it always separates it into two connected components. So for example, this green interval, if I remove any point from it, we have two connected components. But for this yellow neighborhood, removing this blue point, splits it into four components. So this is not locally Euclidean of dimension one. This is not a manifold. Um, in practice, I'll just make the comment that the Hausdorff and second countability conditions are usually easy to check. And the reason for that is that there's a nice result that tells us that uh, for any subspace, uh, with the subspace topology, um, the if the the space is a subspace of is second countable in Hausdorff, then the subspace is also second countable in Hausdorff. So, for example, uh, if we want to prove that any of these spaces here are manifolds, for example, if we want to prove S n is a manifold, well, S n is a subspace of R n plus one, and we know R n plus one is Hausdorff and second countable. Sn has the subspace topology, and therefore Sn is second countable in Hausdorff. So in practice, these conditions are usually easy to check. The, the harder piece of work is showing that M is locally Euclidean of dimension N.